Sam Gay is a professional watercolor artist who specializes in creating paintings inspired by nature, tarot, folklore, witchcraft, and the occult to explore our inner worlds. Her art focus helped shape her career, but the main business skills she had to learn were not taught in art school. You can find out more of Sam's works at samgay.com, but for now, please join us as we discuss monetizing your art, how to navigate creating your projects when you're not good enough, and what it means to be a pro artist. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etcherlab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. Sam, um, thank you for being on the show and I'd love to know everything about your lovely self. So please take us all the way back when you were maybe a kid. I mean, how old were you when you realized art was what you wanted to do for a living? Um, well, I was into art for a, a long time. Uh, especially when I was a kid and I think I think it was in third grade I decided that I professionally wanted to be an artist and oh. at the time I uh, yeah I know it's really early uh, at the time I wanted to be an animator because I was really into cartoons and I was like yeah Wait, that's what I want on third grade so you were like yeah. what, nine <laughs> I don't remember how old I was I was little but I was pretty obsessed with art uh, wow, and you knew animation a was a thing? What what year was yeah. this? 19... Oh, God. Um, I don't know. 80s or 90s? 90s. It's okay. in the 90s, yeah. We're probably the same age. So we were in the 90s, and um, you already knew animation was a job. You know, when, when I was eight, I wanted to be an ice cream vendor, because in my mind, I could eat ice cream all the time. <laughs> and... I mean, that sounds pretty good. That was my dream job. And you wanted to be an animator. Okay, leveling this up. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I was a kid, so I was changing my mind every day. I wanted to, like, you know, uh, be a uh, vet or do, like, oceanography or a wow. bunch of random things. Um, but art kind of was the thing that I never really grew out of. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a pretty small town. Um, my high school is pretty small. Uh, I was very introverted, so I spent most of my time just reading books and making up stories and drawing characters to go with it. And my parents were pretty supportive too, which was very wow. lucky. And they helped me out and got me, um, like extra art classes and stuff like that. Are so... they creative as well or? Um, most, most of my family is actually engineers, oh. so I was kind of the odd one out, but, um, there are other artists in my family, like my grandfather really liked to paint and, um, some of my other relatives, but none of them really did it professionally. It was more mm. just for fun. And I went through high school, assuming I was going to try to pursue art afterwards and, mm. um, my parents really wanted me to go to college, so I went to college for art, and um, I just kept pursuing it from there. So. <laughs> and where were you living at the time? Um, in New Hampshire. I okay. grew up in New Hampshire, and I went to school. Um, I went to college up in Portland, Maine. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then after college, I actually kind of felt a little bit lost because mm -hmm. there's a whole other aspect to doing art professionally if you're not working for a company or like in a studio if you want to work independently you have to have like a a total other skill set of being able to promote yourself and go to conventions and understanding how to run a business and I didn't learn any of that in college really yes. <laughs> yes okay I'm, I'm just like yeah. my, my rent bug is like coming out if this was a video interview you could see me just gesturing like crazy it's like <laughs> yes yes so many artists think that 
they do not need to be a business person in order to succeed at art and i'm like either you hire someone to do it because you have the money god knows from where or yes you have to know how to do business because it is a business yeah so i spent a couple years just really struggling not knowing what to do i was thinking like I was going to get out of college and get a job and everything Mm -hmm. would be great. And that's just not how it worked. Um, How did you navigate that? uh, I just, I'm very stubborn. So I kept going. (laughs) (laughs) Can you give me Um, like an example, like a story that you remember? Because it's very hard. Yeah. um, You know, I I ended up having to move back into my parents' house for quite a few years after Mm -hmm. college um, just to save money so that I could focus on making some art uh, not be working constantly to pay my bills. Um, I spent most of my money just trying to pay back student loans, you know, saving on rent and stuff like that was really important. Um, so, you know, making the choice to live with my parents back in my small hometown, um, you know, there's not many, if any, um, job opportunities in art in that small town or around it. A lot of the part-time jobs I was working was like, there was one at a tea shop. Eventually, I got a job working as a photo editor at like a children's photography place. Mm -hmm. Um, So I learned a little bit of business there. I worked for um, like a clothing boutique and Mm -hmm. I did like their Instagram and social media and emails. And so... I was teaching myself a lot of this stuff and then I was getting to practice it in some of my part-time jobs mm-hmm. um, as far as, you know, the business aspect of things go. And then just getting involved in the community and learning from people who, you know, are already doing this. They're already independent artists. They've already made mistakes. They know, you know, they have a, a wealth of knowledge already and there are some people that are willing to share that. So tapping into that is really important as well. You know, part, part of what I find hard when you're trying to figure out how to do something, you have no clue what it is, is coming up with the right questions to ask. Yeah. How did you come around the right questions? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm just saying this because yeah. I recently became a mom and when I got, you know, became pregnant, I knew nothing of being a pregnant woman. Oh, yeah. And I had no idea what I didn't know and what I, I had to know to raise a baby. No clue. Uh, and then I got into, a, you know, a class and uh, that was mind blowing for me because I had no idea what to research even. And being an artist, I think it's very much like that. You want to learn something, you know, what the desired effect is you know what the result it is but you have no idea how to research to get to the point to the end point that you see it's like it's a very big fog it's like mists yeah. of avalon kind of <laughs> i think an important part of that is just letting go of expectations to some degree letting go of the idea that you think you know what you're looking for and just mm listening to people and observing what people are doing, um, you know, listening to conversations that are going on around you and just, you know, listening to what other people are asking too. Um, just, I've always been kind of quiet and, um, tend to observe more than, uh, than I act. And Mm. so I find that that's kind of how I come across the knowledge that I, I didn't know I needed. Um, Mm -hmm. because I mean, I only have my own perspective and everybody's coming from different places and different experiences. So listening to other people can help, you know, show me things from a perspective that I don't have and, you know, problems that I might not have and solutions that I might not have come across. So, that's a great tip. Learn to listen. <laughs> what else? So you got a bunch of jobs, and those were full-time jobs, or were they part-time? Um, they were all part-time, I think. Mm-hmm. There there was 
there was a couple full-time jobs, but they were like really weird ones. Um, like I, I helped my, a friend of mine do construction on an apartment for like a full-time job for a while. Um, like putting bricks and such. Yeah. Doing like drywall, ripping up floors, taking them down wallpaper. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> What did you take from that experience? What? That I really suck at doing drywall. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A g another great lesson that you just shared. Sometimes doing something just for the sake of realizing you're terrible at it is a valuable experience. Yeah, I definitely know that I wouldn't go into construction as an alternative job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was doing all these jobs and just slowly, you know, finding a place in the community of artists that most mostly online, but going to conventions too and meeting people in person was really important. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to take some classes like uh, the illustration masterclass. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to do that. And um, I met a lot of other artists who are successful or I looked up to or, and other artists that were in the same kind of like stage of growth as I was. Uh, it was really, really good experience just meeting other people in the community and finding a place there. Um, mm -hmm. And that was kind of a foundation for me to start making bigger steps towards working professionally. Yeah. So I would say that I didn't really start working professionally until 2000. 15 probably wow really yeah um that would, which was a it was a couple years out of college three or four years out of college i think that's a great timing like three four years of figuring things out and then going full-time with art it's 2020 oh, now i was, for future I was listeners, a full-time right with so. art but i was doing professional oh. work um th there were times where i tried to go full-time and it just didn't end up making sense and it was just better to have a part-time job just because for security yeah I think you can call yourself a professional artist and still have like a part-time job that's not always art related because mm -hmm. I mean if you're working as an independent artist sometimes things fluctuate a lot and um you know if you've got stuff like student loans to pay uh it's good to just oh, have yeah. something extra um, yeah. Yeah. And like, so there were, there were periods where I did just work full-time art. Other times I picked up a, a part-time job and it kind of cycled that way until when I did the Kickstarter for my tarot. Mm -hmm. But going back a little bit to, um, around when I got my first like professional art job, I feel like there were a lot of stages that I went through that I could kind of like pick out now. So when I first got into it, there was a lot of building my skills as an artist. And I it wasn't so much about finding my voice or expressing my own ideas. It was kind of like learning how to create a piece of work that fits a job that needs to be done. You know, um, all the details of working a job for somebody, all the details of being able to promote your own work. So it was kind of just like learning the basics for a while. And then as I did that for a long time, I was able to find more of my own voice and settle into a way of drawing and a process that was more unique to me. Yeah. And around that time, I started getting a lot more opportunities and people noticed the change and the growth that I had gone through. And um, so question when you started working professionally as an artist was it more of a commission based um thing um yes it was more commission based um and then you grew from that to doing your own thing your tarot yeah. thing and then now i'm assuming people are yeah, seeking now you for the kind of art that you do it's a I'm actually kind of doing more commissions again at the moment because I don't have a big huh. project going on. I kind of want to take a break from big projects because mm -hmm. they're a lot of work. Exhausting. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm curious, like, 
and maybe this is not true, but is there a difference between the commissions that people would hire f like three, four years ago and the commissions that people are hiring you for now? Because your style is so... Like, when I look at your Instagram feed, I see not only a solid style, I see a solid theme. You know, if you want oc occult stuff, you go to Sam. And that's really you. So if I needed to do anything in that theme and in that particular style, of course, that you would be the obvious choice. Uh, like uh, Stephanie and people hire Stephanie Law for what she mm -hmm. does, for example. So I am wondering if five years ago people would go for you for a commission and you had to adapt yourself to feed their needs. And maybe now people are seeking you for the work that you do that is so visually yours. Yeah, um, I I definitely think that the commissions I was getting when I first started were not specific to my art style. It was kind of like, oh, you're a new artist and mm -hmm. here's some work. Well, we want to give you this and opportunity. You can the block, see what do what do. I want. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now um, I haven't been actively seeking out commissions, but I've been getting a couple. Um, like I have a private commission right now that's just, um, they gave me a poem that's very like nature based and I just get to do whatever with it, which is Ooh. very fun. Those are my favorite kinds of private commissions where you just kind of get a little piece of inspiration and a lot of freedom. Um, nice. I did a movie poster for an indie movie. Um, mm. That was definitely like, Uh, it's along the lines of like, you know, heavy metal magazine, um, that kind of stuff. I get a lot of metal bands asking me to do work for them, uh, cool. which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but that's that's been the recent the recent theme. It seems like in the people who have been requesting work from me. Yeah. If I wanted, like, it just came to mind. If I wanted to hire someone to do an illustration themed The Witcher, I would go to you. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that is what I enjoy doing. Kind of like spooky, dark fantasy and lots of nature. Yeah, and it shows. It's beautiful. Your work is gorgeous. And, uh, and now you have a Patreon. Mm -hmm. So what... What are you doing now to support yourself with your art? So you have you started a Patreon, you have your own commissions. What else are you are you up to now? Um, yeah, so I have the Patreon, um, which is it's very nice because I, I kind of have like a little community there too. Um, the commissions, and then I just redid my web page, so I have a shop. Um, There's a local shop here in Salem called um, Hive and Forge, and I have my work in there. But yeah, it's it's mostly Patreon commissions and then just my shop. Um, trying to think if there's any other little little bits of income <laughs> because it's it's kind of good to just like spread out your income and have it yeah a lot of um, sources. So. Oh, please do expand on that. Why? <laughs> Because they're not always reliable. Uh, yeah, your commissions might dry up and then you got to rely on everything else. You might have a bunch of patrons have to drop out and, you know, you'll get less from Patreon that month. The store downtown where I have my work, you know, may have to close for you know, health reasons because of COVID. And then I don't have any money coming in from that. Um, yep. So it, you know, it's not always reliable. It's good to have a always wide prepare net. for the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one more question before I ask you some more art, art specific things. It's like, because I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I don't want to fool myself. And I'd like to hear this from you. So okay. what do you think that you did that got your customers to start seeking you for the kind of work you do versus just hiring you like you're, you're just another artist? Um, I wonder if it's just because um, I share a lot of the insights behind my work. Like when I did the tarot deck, you know, all of the cards have meaning that that tends to be very relatable, and I tell stories with that, and people um, 
I'll sometimes relate to the art and then relate more deeply to the story that goes along with it. And people Mm -hmm. kind of get interested in that and start following my work specifically. But yeah. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, it's like I've been geeking out a lot about this because I started teaching a social media marketing for artists uh, course recently. And uh, I was just talking to my students about this the other day. It's just like you share the work that you love to do. And that's it. The people who hired you to do other things that you don't feel as closely related to, you're not sharing that because that's not who you are. You're only sharing what you truly believe in, right? Oh, yes. (laughs) And when someone looks at your website, at your Instagram, at whatever place you have your work, it's all very um, cohesive. I can easily see who you are and what you love doing and that you're really good at that. that. So why would I hire you for anything else other than what you clearly know how to do because you're not giving your potential buyers any other options? Yeah, okay. Uh, I actually, um, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Um, But yeah, that was a big thing that people told me a lot is, you know, uh, if you do a commission or you're hired for something and it's, it's not like your usual thing that you really love to do. Don't put it on your portfolio. Otherwise you'll be hired for more work like that. And you'll just be doing more work that you don't like. Um, yeah. So I guess having the freedom to do my, my tarot deck too, you know, that was all work that I was very personally invested in. And so I had a big portfolio of stuff that was stuff that I love to do. So how did you come up with the idea for the tarot deck? Because I love personal projects. I think those are the best way to get work on what you love to do because you're doing exactly what you want and no one is telling you how to how to shape it. For me, the tarot deck, it's something that I wanted to do for a long time. I got into tarot when I was like 13 or 14. Um, mm. And I've been reading tarot for a long time. So even when I was, when I was younger, I I really, really wanted to make a tarot deck, but it's a ton of work. So (laughs) how many cards are there in the tarot deck? 78. Um, (laughs) you know, and that's not including the art that you're doing for the back of the card or the, you know, all the other little bits of work that go into it. Um, so yeah, in, in college, I did my thesis on like a little Oracle deck I made. And um, I wrote my whole thesis about, you know, tarot and oracle cards. Wow. Um, can I read that thesis? I'd love to hear I, I'd love to know I about it. I think you can. I, I think they have yes. it at the library at the college that I went to. Um, it might be online. I don't know. I don't know if it's good or <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then while I was in college, I started to collaborate with a friend of mine who was also a tarot reader on a deck but we didn't get too far with that because at the time I just didn't have the like the skills I needed to handle a project of that magnitude like I just I didn't have the resources um I didn't have the the energy or the the knowledge um to pull that off and then you know once I did I I was finally like well I should probably do that tarot deck now and not not put it off anymore and wait until I'm, you know, the perfect artist or anything like that. Um, Cause I know uh, perfectionism is a, is an issue for myself and a lot of other artists. You just want to wait on that, that personal project until you're really, really good and then do it, but you should just do it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Another piece of golden advice <laughs> from Sam herself. So yeah. Um, I did that deck and, um, I, I'm very, very close to putting it into final production. I got my, I have, I haven't told anyone else yet, but I got my, Ooh. my hard copies this past weekend and I just got to work through some, some little issues with it and mm-hmm. we'll probably be ready for final production really, really soon. Oh my goodness, um, this is so exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> it's really, really cool getting to hold the physical deck in my hands. It's like years of work just in this little tiny thing. Um, 
Yeah, it's really cool. It's like, that's a big, the first chunk of my career in a little deck. Aww. <laughs> it's it's kind of great. I love it. Aww. I love that too. This is amazing. Okay, art more artsy stuff. <laughs> During the project and your whole uh, career, what would you consider were the hardest uh, struggles that you had? One of the hardest struggles that I've had, and I, I still have, is just um, maintaining balance in the day-to-day, -day, not overworking or burning out completely, um, you know, maintaining a certain level of productivity and maintaining my mental health, just keeping this balance that allows me to continue to make work and, you know, put my time and energy into making work that I feel really good about. And, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of work to take care of yourself. Um, and working as an independent artist, you don't have anybody keeping you on schedule or, you know, making sure you didn't forget anything or mess anything up. You know, there's no one to save your butt, basically, if if something goes wrong so you're kind of stuck doing everything and that can take a lot out of you so any tips on dealing with that oh I mean I still haven't I think the way that I've come to deal with it is just understanding that everything happens in a cycle so if I'm feeling like mm. I have a lot of energy and I'm working a lot of extra hours um I need to make sure, you know, I don't overdo it and burn out and just understand that like probably in a week, I'm not going to have that same amount of energy and I should plan ahead and make sure everything I can is scheduled out for a week or two ahead. So when I hit that point of like, yeah, I don't have as much energy to get as much done, you know, a lot of stuff is already taken care of so that I can put less hours into it and still look like I'm getting everything done. <laughs> yeah. And just, just always trying to do a little bit of work every work day, um, even if I'm feeling like uninspired and like I can't get anything done. Just do a little bit, just an hour, and then you'll feel so much better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like working out. Just seriously, it really it's hard to get off that couch, but you'll feel better afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a period after I finished the Kickstarter where I was just so exhausted. It wasn't even exhaustion. I think it just I was really intimidated. I was excited and then I was like, "Oh my god, now I have to follow through with all of this and get everything done and all of these people are watching me now. They're all waiting." And so I had a couple months where I just couldn't do anything cuz that level of like intimidation and feeling like there was a lot of expectations all of a sudden uh -huh. just made me freeze. Uh, I just had like complete art paralysis. And uh, oh I went, I went to a therapist for a little bit and talked about it. And um, he, he was the one who suggested like, what you should do is first thing in the morning, spend an hour working on, you know, just the art and, if you want to continue after that hour, you can. And if you don't, you don't have to feel guilty that you didn't work on it or you don't have to, you know, keep pushing it off. You you did something, you know, a little bit of progress. So that helped me a lot. And that still helps wow. me when I hit those points of feeling really burnt out. Wow, that's great advice. I agree. Beautiful. What do you think it means to be good enough to do art? Is it something that you achieve or something unattainable? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let us know in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash gay. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash G-U-A-Y. Like the podcast? Help us support the show by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. See you in the next episode and until then, let's make more art! <laughs>